Now, we were speaking a little earlier about the criminal law relating to dangerous dogs, which is found in the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991. But criminal law isn't always the end of the matter, because sometimes if you are bitten by a dog or uh, any animal attacks, the owner can be sued in the civil courts and have to pay compensation, which if they haven't got insurance can be quite an expensive exercise. Here to talk a little about that is Jonathan Hand QC from Outer Temple Chambers. Jonathan is an expert in animal law. Full disclosure, uh, he's from the same chambers as me. Jonathan, I've got a Labradoodle. She's absolutely lovely and wouldn't hurt a fly. Not so sure about squirrels, but if I let her off the lead in the park and she attacked and bit someone, could that person sue me? Good evening. Evening, Daniel. Uh, Yes, they could. Um, There are two grounds on which they might bring a claim against you. The first is under a piece of uh, legislation, the Animals Act, which was passed in 1971, so it's nearly 50 years old. And the other piece of, um, well, the other ground on which they could bring a claim against you is in, in negligence, uh, because you owe a, a duty of care uh, to others in the park or, or elsewhere uh, to take reasonable care, it's no more than that, uh, to avoid injury uh, to them that may occur uh, due to your your dog being out of control. Am I liable for any dog bite that my dog inflicts on somebody? No, you're not. There's no, no, there's no absolute uh, liability. Under the Animals Act, uh, you can be found liable without any fault on your part, as opposed to in negligence, which is a, a fault-based um, ground of liability. Under the Animals Act, um, what a claimant has to show is that the three requirements for strict liability under the Act uh, are made out. And essentially what that means is that if uh, your animal, your dog has behaved in a way that is dangerous, displayed dangerous characteristics, and you know uh, that your dog can behave in such a way, you can then be fixed with liability. But that is subject to the statutory defences that the Act uh, provides. And so, for example, if you could show that uh, that the injured party, the claimant, Um, had uh, acted in some way uh, themselves that meant that they were at fault or they voluntarily accepted the risk, uh, then that would provide you with a defence. Would it make a difference if it was my daughter rather than me who took the dog out for a walk? Would I still be liable? Yes, you would. Um, The the basis of liability under the Act is that the keeper, uh, who is the person who is either the owner of the dog or has it in their possession at the relevant time um, can be fixed with liability, provided those three conditions that I just mentioned um, are made out. But um, a keeper can also be held liable if a member of his or her household uh, has the dog in their possession at the relevant time. And so uh, in that in the circumstances you've just described, you, I'm afraid, would be fixed with liability uh, through your daughter. Let's move away from a dog. So many people have dogs. And let, let's go to what my son would much rather have, which is a rattlesnake. I imagine I keep a rattlesnake, which is inherently a more dangerous animal than a dog, and it escaped and it bit someone. It, is, is the liability position the same as for a dog or is it different? No, that would be different because um, the Act distinguishes between animals of a dangerous species and, and those of a non-dangerous species. Non-dangerous species, not surprisingly, includes dogs, um, cows, horses and so on. But animals of a dangerous species, and I, and I think uh, most, if not all, snakes would fall, not surprisingly, within uh, that categorization. Um, then uh, under the Act, uh, you will be found liable for any damage that uh, your uh, snake uh, has caused. Uh, and um, there isn't the requirement um, for the three conditions that I mentioned earlier to be made out. So it really is um, a a, a case of absolute liability for any injury that's been caused. Uh, Finally, Jonathan Hand, can you sue someone for damage to property? So if my next door neighbour has a a large dog in their garden and it jumps up at our fence and knocks it down, can I get the cost back off my neighbour for re-erecting the fence? Yes, you can. Um, Under the, the same two grounds of liability that I mentioned just now apply. Uh, Under the Animals Act, damage is defined broadly, and so it doesn't just include personal injury, it also includes damage to property. Uh, And if you were to bring a claim in negligence, uh, liability could attach, again, not just for personal injury, but also for damage that's reasonably foreseeable. Jonathan Hand, QC, is a barrister at Outer Temple Chambers. Thank you very much.